In this video, we are going to learn about the Pythagorean Theorem and Pythagorean Triples. The Pythagorean Theorem is a rule that works for right triangles. If we have a right triangle, which means a triangle with a right angle, a 90 degree angle, and we label the sides A, B, and C, where C is the hypotenuse, which is the longest side across from the right angle. Then, a certain relationship exists, which is A squared, so the length of this segment, plus B squared, the length of this segment squared, will always equal C squared. Now this is useful because it means that in right triangles, if we know two sides, we can always solve for the third side. So for example, if we had a triangle where we knew that the two legs were three and four, and we didn't know our hypotenuse, we could use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the hypotenuse. We would say three squared plus four squared, so those are our two legs squared, equals x squared. Remember that the hypotenuse always has to be by itself on one side of the equation. Then we would simplify this, nine plus 16 equals x squared, so 25 equals x squared, and we solve this at this point by square rooting both sides, or thinking what number squared equals 25, and we get x equals five. Now the converse of the Pythagorean theorem is also true. And what that means is if you don't know whether or not a triangle is a right triangle, but the Pythagorean theorem works, then it must be a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem will only work for right triangles. So for example, if you had a triangle and the three sides were six, eight, and 10, and you didn't know if it was a right triangle or not, you could test the Pythagorean theorem to see. So what you would test is if six squared plus eight squared equals 10 squared. And the reason I knew to put 10 over here is because that's the longest side. So if it's the hypotenuse, it must be over there because it's the longest side. And then you would test 36 plus 64, does that equal 100? And in fact, it does, 100 equals 100. So therefore, this must be a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem works. Certain numbers, which are whole numbers that work with the Pythagorean theorem, are called Pythagorean triples. So we've looked at some already in this video. Pythagorean triples are sets of three whole numbers that work with the Pythagorean theorem. So one example we saw is three, four, five. And any multiple of 3, 4, 5 will also work. And so we saw one multiple of 3, 4, 5, which is 6, 8, 10, right here. So two examples so far. Well, really, one example is 3, 4, 5, or any multiple of that, which means like if you multiply all three of those numbers by 2, you get 6, 8, 10, and 6, 8, 10 also works. If you multiply all of them by three, you'll get another set of three numbers that will work with the Pythagorean theorem. Another common Pythagorean triple that it's good to have memorized is 5, 12, 13. The reason it's good to have both of these memorized is because they show up all the time. And if you notice and know that those are right triangles, it will just save you some time. So for example, if you run across a problem where you know it's a right triangle and you see that the hypotenuse is five and one of the sides is four, then you can know right away that the other side is three without having to go through the Pythagorean theorem. Of course, you can always still use the Pythagorean theorem, that's fine. It's just these Pythagorean triples show up a lot, so they have a special name, Pythagorean triples. Remember, any Pythagorean triple that works 
Um, any multiple of it will also work as well. So multiples of 5, 12, 13 will also always work with the Pythagorean theorem and create right triangles.